Um, hey guys, welcome back to Gamer Mag. Um, we've had to reduce the quality quite severely in order to, well, pretty much make it watchable and not like for you guys. No idea why it's doing this. Blame the United Kingdom's superb internet. But yeah, I am Kainite, and with me is Fleur, like in the first game. Um, so yeah, we've finally got two teams, Fleur, Hubbub and EXG. What are your predictions? Um, I think uh, Expert Gaming are going to win this one. Uh, good team play. They're a uh, good team. Uh, while Hubbub is uh, just a max, really. Okay, fair enough. Um, so yeah, Hubbub, Hubbub's supposed lineup actually consists of six players. Um, Slayin, KRS, Chobo, War Clown, of course the XCSS professional and Curso and Quitty. No sign of War Clown at the moment. We seem to have Chobo, who's Chubasta. We definitely have Slayin. Oh, who's Slayin? Could that be War Clown? X Lions player. Uh, oh, okay. So he's not on the yeah. list that I was provided. But it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All is good. It's fine. Um, so yeah, the other team who are Expert gaming. We've got Skip, Yakin, Galaxy, Base Raper, and Spitty. So here we go, Mirage guys. Um, I actually missed who won the the uh, the pistol round, the, the knife round. Sorry, but here we go. So the terrorists all heading towards that a bomb site. Wait, no, this is the p knife round. Oh dear, what are they doing? No, I didn't. I thought they just knifed. I thought that as well. <laughs> Welcome oh, well. to Counter Strike. Welcome to Counter Strike. It's as simple as that. Best of three in knife rounds. Is that genuinely what they do? dropped. And someone's no, no, to shoot no, 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 no. What is going on? Oh, well, one guy in CT dropped. Oh, here we go. Match is live. About time? No, no. <laughs> they're, they're just nine out of ten. Oh, right. Oh, God. It wouldn't be Counter Strike without delays. That's what we always yeah. say. Here we go, we're going live? No. Okay. Tuba's joined back. So we have five players on each team, which is always a nice start. You sort of need ten players to really play a game of Counter-Strike. And here we go, the match is live, guys. We've got Expert Gaming. Let's see whether they uh, end up living up to their names and actually playing like experts. And NL. He wouldn't be Counter-Strike without delays. Course not. <laughs> that would be silly. the name of the game. We're, we're, we're just building up the hype here. Yeah, exactly. It's all part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. In the meantime, I'll go and tweet the new, uh, the new Twitch link. So remember to go and follow Gamer Mag on Twitter. It's at Gamer Mag underscore No or N O, of course, for Norway. Feel free to go and follow myself on Twitter, which is at Reason Gaming TV. Make sure to tune into the Gfinity Alienware CS:GO Pro League, where I will be casting on Tuesday. Hopefully, where H two K are playing. Yeah, the H two K will Just be playing. Just mention that. Yeah, um, GamePub, they're going to have to drop out because they've obviously lost a few players, but who cares about GamePub for now? We're focusing on Hubbub and Extreme Gaming, so we've got four terrorists heading towards Apps, and this CT's going to be in trouble, and that CT, without a doubt, will have spotted all of them there. A really interesting tactic employed from the terrorists, and it's definitely worked for them. They've just pretty much stampeded into that bomb site. They've got full control. Base Raper coming from above. Two kills for him. And, well, Chubasta, or Chuba, is going to have a very, very, very big job on his hands. The question is, do they know where he's coming from? Yes, they do. 1-0 to Extreme. What did you actually think of that all-apps rush? Well, kind of interesting, but, you know, this is a team playing together all the time, pranking. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, how about it's just a mix. Uh, obviously, the expert gaming know what they have to do when they rush apps. Yeah, I mean they've like you know they practiced it before. Yeah, probably. It. Yeah. So of course, 
Expert Gaming won the pistol round, which means they've got bigger and more powerful weapons now. A few Galils, a Krieg in the mix, and Yakin decided to go all in and buy an AK-47. And Mr. Krieg, Spitty himself, manages to get a kill before falling to Hiawata's CZ-75. Of course, one of the newer pistols added into CSGO. And it's... Uh, bloody powerful as well. It's uh, become a very popular choice for a lot of professional CSGO players. So Galaxy Indeed. in apps. KRS is rotating back and in towards a smaller B bomb site. And at the moment, see t the terrorists, sorry, they're taking their time. They know they've got the big weapons. I think they want to try and pick the CTs off one by one from longer distances because, of course, those Galils are far more effective, or on paper should be far more effective from long distance as opposed to the uh, pistols of their opposition. But it doesn't look like it at the moment. Base Raber will shut down KRS and the terrorists going all into this A bomb site. But there's CTs left, right, and center. Base Raper once again. He got two in the last round, and so far he's got two again. Galaxy nailing Chubasta in the head. And uh, Hayawata also not lasting too long, and pretty much what we expected. Uh, Flicks, it's safe to say. I think that won the pistol round. They've won the second round, and we expect them to really, in reality, win this round as well, don't we? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, bigger guns usually wins, anyway. So, it's going to be interesting to see what the CTs try to do to uh, counter this, uh, bar uh, this barrage of terrorists. Hubbub Slayin and his teammate have pushed into this mid-area. They've got their eyes on underground, but of course we know that no one's really lurking in and around there at the moment. Oh no, Base Raper's going to come. He spots one, but he's not going to check it again. He spots another. Good stuff from Base Raper. But Hiawata, just as we expected, they had three in that area. Managed to get a kill, and CT-wise, they just want to try and get as many kills as they can when they're up against big weapons. But it doesn't matter now. This is where the real game starts. This is where we start to see some proper and hopefully sexy Counter-Strike. We've got five M4s against five AK, well, four AK-47s and a Galil. And uh, what do you expect to see from the CTs this round, Fleur? Well, I expect them to hold out, but I think uh, the terrorists' uh, routine and team players are still going to win. Uh, we'll see, though. See a couple of grenades, flashes, smokes coming over here. So pretty much all the terrorists heading right into that A bomb site, and I think it was interesting. We didn't see the CTs push the B bomb site. If they did, they would have realized that no CTs were there, but KRS will get two before dropping down to his death. And those kills from KRS were massive in securing that bomb site for his team. 3 1, and that's exactly what we wanted. The CTs, they lost the first pistol round. They lost the next two rounds. And if they'd lost that round again, they would have been forced to deco again. But at 3 1, there's no reason why they can't, you know, keep those 5M4s and work their way back into it. But I think we're definitely going to have to see Extreme try and change their game around. And Hayawata was underground. I think a mistake from Spitty. He should have been watching underground for his teammate. And, well, Extreme Gaming have had to pay the price. Base Raper's trying to get a frag now. He spotted two as before falling to his death. So, Spitty in mid... He knows that there's a few CTs in and around that area. But you know what, Fleur? It's going to be tough for them. They're two men down. And, well, what do you think about Mirage? T-sided or CT-sided or maybe 50-50? What's your opinion on it? I think it's closer to 50-50, but I would say that uh, it's kind of t terrorist biased. Uh, some good smokes and flashes you can throw to just put the CTs off. Very and lots of uh, lots of uh, professional teams have really worked on their strategies on Mirage. Mm, because you can obviously, like you said, smoke over the build, throw smokes over the buildings, and etc. etc. So three two, and of course that is going to well and truly force the terrorists to deco themselves. 
they're all going to push towards mid. The nade's going to go over and deal a lot of damage onto base Raper. Spit is going to try and push that CT that he spots in window. But that CT is KRS. And he will drop not one, but two of the terrorists and send them back to T-spawn. Three versus five. And really, it's going to take something very, very special from the terrorists to try and pull this one back. KRS gets the hat trick and Quitty, I think, just might go aggro at mid. He knows the terrorists were last seen in and around the area. Slane's going to throw that nade. That's going to deal a lot of damage. No, it doesn't. Where are the T's? How did that not deal any damage to him? So Galaxy around the corner is going to pick off one. The bad news is they know exactly where he is. And he is sent back to T-spawn. Three on three. And I think it was two rounds ago where KRS, he went really, really big all alone on the A bomb site by himself. And I think hats off to KRS. He, uh, he came out a window and he got three kills. Um, granted, the terrorists were on a deco, but three kills, in my, in my opinion, is always impressive, regardless of whether your opposition's on an eco or not. Yeah, KRS is a really good player. Uh, and Lions, close down last year, they played really well together. Well, KRS even managed to kill Guardian a couple of times with his op. <laughs> yeah, Guardian, not a very uh, easy player to shut down. And uh, Slane's going to shut down Yakin. Spitty with the return frag. Quitty with two. Good stuff from him. Hat trick as well. He goes in search of the fourth. Can't get it. But you know what? Hubbub are the mixed team. They're on the less favoured side. And they're in the lead. So expert gaming. You don't look like experts to me, and they're being forced to eco now, Fleur. Uh, no, they are going to buy. They are, no, they are going to buy. Oh. They are going to buy. Right. Whew. Risky one. A risky one, yeah. So, uh, we've got Spitty with no helmet, so a bit of a forced buy from him. But the terrorists, let's be realistic, they need to get a few more rounds on the board. They've left the bomb in T-spawn, so I'm not quite sure whether that was intentional or not. KRS will shut down Spitty. And is it going to be the start of many for them? Ayakin, oh, lovely shot onto Quitty. Quitty, of course, was a nuisance against the terrorists in the last round. KRS dealing very, very well with the window area. And Yakin's expecting him to come out towards the A bomb site from there. But there's no CT left standing within this A bomb site. And Base Raper confirms that Tuba has to rotate. But he's making a lot of noise. You've got to stop making that noise, Tuba. As you can see there, the terrorists heard him. But unfortunately for them, they could not pick him off. And Base Raper, you can see, I, di I do think they may have left that bomb in T-Spawn accidentally because they were in and around the A bomb site. They've been forced to fall back now. But good for them. They've got that one-man advantage, which means that if they do lose an extra man, it won't be too catastrophic for them. And Galaxy is going to spot us. Oh, ho, ho! lovely shooting from Galaxy. He knew he was getting shot from behind, but he couldn't shut down Tubester. And Tubester's all by himself now. He yeah, decides to trade that M4 for the AK-47. And base Raper on 13 hit points. And Yakin on 14. And you know what? It was doable. The clutch was doable for Tuba Stank. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't meant to be. The two versus one situation proved to be a little bit too much for Tuba. And 4-4. An even game so far, Fleur. I didn't want what? <laughs> I said it's an even game so far. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely even. <laughs> So, terrorists pushing right into this A bomb site, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie, guys, it looks like expert. They don't, I don't think they're really experts on Mirage. Of course, the, the maps were decided using a veto system that was used in EMS, and at the moment, all we've really seen the terrorists do is just rush straight into that A bomb site, and the CTs, after they got weapons, have managed to shut them down with ease. But Skippy is the last man standing. Let's see if a bit of the commentator's curse is gonna kick in. The answer to that is no. 5-4 <laughs> in favour of the CTs. Um, what do you suggest for expert gaming at the moment? Well, I think they should... Uh, right now they should eco, of course. Uh, they have to go more for picks, it looks like. Try to uh, take down a couple of guys before they actually decide where they go. Mm. Uh, they're really decided where they want to go in the beginning of the round. And I, I don't think it has worked at, uh, a lot for them. Mm -hmm. Gotta agree. At the moment, they're pretty much just rushing into bomb sites. You know, all together, when there's five of them, 
And they're going to run into a shitload of uh, CTs at the moment. Oh, Tubster with two. Hayawata pops out. Is he going to send the last terrorist to sleep? He does. Six for the score. And uh, it's too easy for the CTs. It's too easy. Expert, they've got to try something different. They've got to take it slower. You hit the nail on the head when you said they need to try to go for picks. They're rushing around as five all over the map. It's not going to get them anywhere. It's not going to get them anywhere. They're up against that silenced M4, which is brilliant to spray with at short range. And uh, I think it's it's safe to say that any somewhat slightly experienced person in Counter Strike will easily be able to tell you that what expert gaming are attempting to do right now is just it's just it's just not how you play Counter Strike properly. And there we go. We talked about them trying to get picks by themselves, but Base Raper walking into that A bomb site by himself up against three CTs. I'm sorry, with no smokes, with no flashes. That's not the way to do it, but hopefully that AK shot from Spitty is a sign of things to come for expert gaming. Four on four. Galaxy is holding the angle in Kitchen, and he will land the headshot. Good from Expert Gaming. They're finally starting to live up to their name. They're finally starting to look like experts. Yakin's going to try and protect the short area. Spitty is stood at the bench with his second. And at four versus one, surely there's no way back into it for uh, the counter-terrorists. Quitty looks like he's uh, going to live up to his name and quit himself. He's managed to pick up a Galil, and he's run away somewhere on this Mirage map to try and save the weapon. 6-5, and uh, I don't know what to think of that round. I really don't. Um, well, they, it was a pretty good round from Expert Gaming. They did change it up a bit, trying to fake B, or mm -hmm. uh, uh, fake A and go for B, which actually they managed because uh, yeah. Hubbub rotated way too quickly. So, Mr. Opening Fragger and Base Raper manages to not rape a base, but rape one of his opposing members. Lovely shot from Yakin and the seats is their deco in. And hopefully, we should see it become 6-6 six, six in favour of the terror. Well, not in favour of anyone, because 6-6 six, six is a draw. Deary me, I think I need to take a few more math lessons. So, the bombs on the back of Galaxy. The smokes are being dispersed. They're being lobbed towards CT spawn and mid. And seven three five five six zero eight. The bomb is down, and another easy kill for Yakin. And six six. So, uh, if there's anyone who's a member of Expert Gaming watching, um, and you're telling them what me and Fleur are suggesting, it most certainly looks like that's exactly what they're doing, doesn't it, Fleur? Yeah, you know, sometimes you need a you need an expert to give some tips to other experts. So base raper. Here you go. All right, it's <laughs> base raper sneaking in towards the A bomb site. Where are the rest of them going? The CT's playing very, very aggressive. They're deco again, Fleur. I'm surprised they can't actually afford to buy up, but uh, they're the experts, I guess. Not me. Spitty dropping down low. He's going to spot a CT, and he will shut him down. Is he going to get the second? You know what? He does. And Yakin joining in on the action with two shots. And it's easy for expert gaming. I think they're going to try and push that B bomb site to uh, try and get the bomb down. They are, of course, trying to search for the last CT. And KRS walks into the crosshair of Galaxy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy is the name of the game. And do you think 96 would be a respectable scoreline for expert gaming? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's uh, usually very close on Mirage. Uh, sometimes you have these. Uh, great minds on a team that just makes it 10 to 5 or 12 to 3 for the terrorist side but it's definitely respectable so quitty pushing None of these all the way teams up mid are very top so yeah what do you think of that of of what quitty just did there you know pushing up mid and getting that early frag uh, well it worked uh, so a bit it was of a worth doing yeah yeah. Well, I guess it's uh, one of those risks that when it pays off, it's brilliant. And <laughs> when it goes against you, then you wish you never yeah. did it. Yeah. So anyways, three exactly. versus two. Solid for the CT so far. But the good news for Expert Gaming is they have planted the bomb. And Base Raper, last man standing. Commentator's Curse kicks in. And KRS with his second of the round. So Hubbub, for the first time in this game, Fleur, they've bought an op. 
um, and it's paid off for them. And if you are orping on CT Side Mirage, other than obviously the regular picks at window, after taking your picks at window, where would you recommend falling back to? How would you recommend playing it? Oh, and look at this, Skippy for the terrorist side's got the orp. So, you know, tell us what you think about yeah, the orp well, well, on Mirage. Both well, Skip and KRS are pretty good offers from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, I know KRS is probably the better one. Oh no, not this time. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Skippy landing the orb um, shot. But the op is pretty important on Mirage. You can get some easy picks with the with them in the early rounds. Or early seconds of the rounds. Yeah, giving you and obviously when you get those early picks they give you such a both a mental and physical advantage, which sometimes is exactly what the doctor orders in Counter Strike. And the expert game you're heading towards this B bomb site once again. They seem to favour it over the larger bigger bomb site. And it's definitely paying off for them. It's the last round of the first half. Four versus two, and is it gonna remain in favour of expert gaming? But the CTs they haven't done too badly as it stands, but I'm sure they'd uh, like to go into the second half in the lead. And is it going to become possible? No, it's not. It's impossible now, isn't it? 8-7, Spitty with the kill, Galaxy with another. And uh, I wouldn't say it's been all too easy for the terrorists. We've got to bear in mind that the CTs, they lost the pistol round, and then they went into the lead, and the terrorists brought it back round. So it's been a bit of a topsy-turvy half, but... Uh, who do you think is going to win this game based on what we've seen from the first half already and based on the fact that it is a T-sided map? Well, I'm not sure really because the, these guys, they seem very on the same level. Uh, killing each other for a match and the scores are pretty much the same for each player. But I'm guessing still Expert Gaming is going to win. All right, let's see. With all their team play, you're anticipating correctly. Oh, KRS lands the shot with the one Glock onto the face of Galaxy. Base Raper blowing, slaying to smithereens, and again, uh, Yakin again, dearie me, <laughs> Yakin uh, rotating towards that smaller B bomb site. Four versus three, an expert gaming. They're low on HP and they're low on a man as well. KRS with the Glock headshot and Yakin last man standing, but not anymore. Hiawata returning the favour. 8 8 the score. And uh, hopefully we'll see some Galils come out now. KRS has bought a few nades. Slaying with the Galil. Three Galils. Yeah, what did you think of t the terrorist approach to that, to that round? Yeah, as I said earlier, with a lot of grenades, smokes, flashes, uh, you definitely have the upper hand on Mirage. Uh, so easy to close uh, places uh, with smokes on Mirage. Uh, so the T's definitely have uh, the favoured side. And it definitely looks favoured at the moment, doesn't it? The question at hand is, what are the T's going to do with all these Galils? They're all pretty much at mid, walking, taking their time. They, uh, they want to, of course, come up against the CT's at, at long distance, because the Galil, of course, is a much better weapon at long distance than the pistols. Quitty's going to get the first frag. Oh, ho, ho, KRS is pushed by Skippy. And uh, he knows that the T's are all coming from mid. Skippy with another kill on that 5-7. Could prove to be a round changer. Changer in favour of the CT's. Hiawata last man standing. And who would have thought that? The CT's winning that round. An amazing play with the pistols there from Expert Gaming. I think the T side should have just rushed, rushed the spot. And uh, hoped for the best to be honest. Yeah, I think fair play to Skippy, you know, he went aggressive, he thought, fuck it, I've got the 5-7, let's go aggro, we know how powerful it is in CSGO, and let's see what we can pull off, oh, Spitty dealt damage to Gummitaras through the, to, to, through the wall, I didn't even know you could shoot through there, so fair play to Spitty, <laughs> you start to wonder what would happen if you had an AK-47, and at the moment it's shooting practice for Galaxy, unfortunately, ran out of bullets. But uh, a few nades here and there, a few more gallows here and there, which of course the CTs picked up off their dead uh, opposing uh, soldiers in the previous round, and they did manage to shut down that uh, deco push in towards the B-bomb site. And forget the deco push, it's 10-8, and the terrorists now finally have weapons. Oops, Galaxy. Wow, Galaxy knives his teammate to 39 HP. 
So uh, probably doesn't like spitting. <laughs> it doesn't look like it, does it? So where well, the terror is coming then? Quitty's on 39 HP, so I guess it pretty much uh, evens out the accidental knife from Galaxy. We've got the bomb dropped outside of A, which pretty much hints at where the terrorists are thinking of going. And there we go, Skippy with the orc shot onto Quitty, but Gumitares is quick to return the kill. One AK from KRS, and two from KRS as he explodes on the A bomb site. And at four versus two, I can only see one winner of this round. But no, Spitty, I think he's listening to me. He's telling me, no, Kaya, I've got something else in mind. But Gumitares will take out Galaxy. And Spitty, last man standing, he's got that AWP Safari mesh. They know where he was last spotted. I think he knows KRS is coming from behind. No, 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 no. Spitty, you've got to hit shots like that. <laughs> and I think at the end of the day... I don't know whether you saw that shot, but I was quite surprised that he missed that shot. No, I was actually on Keras' side. Fair enough. But he should, he should probably have hit that. Mm. He couldn't really jump in the hole. Yeah. Whew. What a game so far. 10-9 and oh, there's a headshot from Gumitares onto Skippy. He's going to throw that nade onto short and deals a lot of damage to Base Raper. He's only on 18 HP and he's going to need a medic sometime soon. And all the terrorists are still alive and standing. It looks like they're going to head towards this B bomb site. The stampede of them, the train of terrorists, all heading in towards this B bomb site now. And Galaxy is the only CT there. He's going to spot one, but he can't kill anyone. He's going to shoot, and he's going to die. Quitty with the kill. Gumitares replying with another, and Spitty. Maybe making life a bit easier for his team, but they've still got a massive, they've got a huge job on their hands. It's four versus one, and what is Akin going to do? Or Yakin? He's got that M4A1 Nitro, and nah, he's not going to go for it. Probably the right decision. And uh, the question at hand is now is whether the T's are going to be able to track him down. He hears KRS coming from mid, and he will land a headshot. The problem is now that they know where he is, so if Yakin really wants to save that weapon, he should have ran away. But uh, he stayed in the same spot, and I don't know what you think, Fleur, but uh, when you get a kill, you've got to make sure you get on the move, otherwise, unfortunately, when you're up against three terrorists, they'll track you down. Uh, yeah, well... I think, uh, who was left there? Yeah, he had some, uh, he had a good angle on uh, guys coming from kitchen there. Yeah. So it didn't work out. So the CT is pretty much all rushing up mid, just, you know, it's a deco round, they know it's a deco round, they're trying to get it over and done with, Slaying running out of ammo, he's gonna land the shot with the Glock. 11-10, and it's just... It's brilliant how this game, you know, keeps tilting in favour of different teams, pretty much. One second, we've got the CTs in the lead. One second, we've got the terrorists in the lead. Um, that's what we like to see in Counter-Strike. Evenly matched games. Uh, much more entertaining than the 14-1 on DDoS 2 we saw earlier on. It's probably <laughs> safe to say that. Yeah, indeed. So the CTs, they've decided to put four CTs on B, and unfortunately for them, the Ts are pretty much all over the exact opposite bomb site. So the CTs will eventually realise that, so the Ts, if they want to get the bomb down, they're going to have to get moving fast, and as you can see, the CTs have finally realised that. Yakin, oh, he managed to get the orb shot through the smoke, but unfortunately he was in the foot of Hayawata, so he's going to be limping onto that bomb site now. Two kills apiece, Skippy coming somewhere, Auto Director not picking it up, and are the Terrors going to turn this around? Gumitares says yes. He's saying, I want to turn this round. He's going to lob that nade. It's going to land right on Yakin. And I felt that. And this is anybody's game. The terrorist sees the AWP of Yakin. And he's got a spray. What is going on? Two versus two. And it's all happening here. Galaxy and Yakin, the last seat. He's left standing. Oh, lovely shot from Yakin. The pinpoint accurate shot with that AWP. Onto the face of one of the terrorists. And at one second, it looked like he was going to tilt in favour of the CTs. One second, it looked like he was going to tilt in favour of the Ts. Then it went backwards, and now it looks like the CTs are going to get the round. Gumitares on only five points of health. He's going to get one, and Galaxy now, he's changed his angle. Gumitares is expecting him to come from CT spawn. Surely it's going to be Galaxy. It is. But I honestly thought the terrorists were going to steal it at one point, where one of them came around the corner through mid and just could just see the uh, the end of Yakin's orb peeking out. And I'm surprised he didn't get the kill in the end. 
Yeah, that was actually very surprising. Uh, AVP is so easy to peek around the corners. And when you know that where the player is, you should kill him when he doesn't know where you are. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, to Quitty with the headshot onto Skippy, opening it up really early. We've seen Yakin do damage to at least one terrorist trying to push out of App Slaying with two. It's easy peasy for him. Five versus two. We've got Yakin with the AWP and Galaxy with the M4, and surely they're going to save. Yakin's, Yakin's in a very tough situation at the moment. What's he done? I'm not quite sure what he's doing. He's put that smoke in front of the little hole, and he's. Uh, Trying to hide like a ninja. So whatever floats your boat, Mr. Yakin. I think they know he's there. They do. And surely they'll pick <laughs> up his AWP. And Galaxy, hiding behind the truck, I don't think it's going to last much longer. Maybe, yeah. Probably he's going to get one kill. They know where he is. The terrorists are going to try and run after him. Is he going to get the other kill? He does. A lot of exit frags for him. And you know what? They don't hurt. Ooh. Just about... Just like saved, saved by the clock, saved by the bell. Uh, Indeed. 12, 11. Very close round there for a Galaxy. Yeah, and as we can see, Galaxy, the rest of his teammates are deco or ecoing, but Galaxy still has that M4. And you know what? That could play a big part in this game because he's going to push mid now. No, he's uh, holding short. Spoke too soon. And the terrorists all heading towards the B bomb site. Or at least with the bomb. No, the bomb's on the A bomb site. Oh, dear me. So Skippy, with that P2000, all eyes on apps. KRS is going to push down mid. Spots base Raper and Quitty, and the AKs are reigning supreme at the moment, as we'd expect. Galaxy's trying to play from long distance. He's going to get one, two from Galaxy, and that is what we were talking about. That is why saving that M4, guys, was so important. Quitty's on 23 HP, Hiawata's on 26, and if Galaxy can just. No, they don't know that. You know what, Fleur? I think Galaxy has the enough quality and uh, to potentially, you know, take out Hiawata and Quitty. You know, when you consider the low HP that Hiawata and Quitty are on, but mm -hmm. they've opted. Yeah. To, Spitty obviously picked up an AK-47. They've opted to save the weapons, and uh, I can't really argue that it's a bad decision because we know that Hiawata and Quitty are on such low low points of health. But of course, Galaxy has no way of knowing that unless he's uh, hacking of course which I hope he isn't <laughs> yeah, I, yeah and if, uh, if the CTs had a bit more money they uh, probably would have gone for it but uh, only th three players with 3300 isn't really worth losing two weapons over so that's probably a big factor in that round yep I uh, agree so Skippy heading towards underground with only a FAMAS and it just goes to emphasize the money complications that the CTs have at the moment. But he's going to manage to get a kill with it and it looks uh, like a few more of the terrorists might drop down. 4 versus 5. Quitty only on 13 HP so it's not really looking healthy at the moment for the terrorists at all. But uh, you know it could still change. KRS is hiding in a pretty much perfect angle. Oh, and I spoke too soon. Brace Raper will take him out. And five versus three. You start to wonder whether there's uh, whether this round is you know written in the stars for the terrorists or not. I don't think it's meant to be. They're going to push straight into the B bomb site. They've anticipated that there's only going to be Galaxy. That there's only going to be one CT on that B bomb site. But he's dealing a lot of damage, and he's dealt even more damage. And Spitty will shut down the last terrorist. And a very, very solid round from the CTs. Yeah, they even managed to keep all their weapons, uh, all the terrorists. Uh, they're losing money really quickly now. If they lose this round, they probably have to eco the next. Yeah, we, you know, there's no reason why you think this game might not, you know, go into overtime. And Skippy is going to want it to go in, into, well... Obviously preferring not to go into overtime, and if you keep pulling off headshots like that, you probably uh, will get something out of the game. Gumitara's returning the kill. You see, one team gets a kill, the other team returns the kill. It's brilliant Counter-Strike to watch. It is such an evenly matched game. Slane's going to push all the way through mid. He's made a lot of noise, though. He knows Yakin's there, but base Raper, the crossfire was superb from the CTs. And now the question is whether Base Rape will manage to shut down this last terrorist. No, KRS will get the kill. He's going to get the second. KRS going big on that A bomb site. And Galaxy is all 
alone. Let's go and have a look at where he is. He has the AK-47 in hand. And he's very, very close to Gummy Tares. But Galaxy doesn't know that. He's going to see the flash going over. Who's going to see who first? Galaxy sees one of the terrorists. He's made a lot of noise. If only Galaxy could see what we could see with X-Ray. Yeah, I'm pretty sad there for Galaxy. Uh, he was very close to Gummy Tares. Uh, should probably have looked for another person on the terrorist team uh, before taking... Uh, the other guy out. Yeah, play a bit more patient. So Yakin is going to up mid and it's going to pay off for him. And this is what I mean, guys. The terrorists look like they've got the advantage. And before you know it, it swings back in the CT's favor. And hopefully, fingers crossed, they can use that orb to their advantage. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they can make it 14-13. KRS is going to push up mid. He knows base rapers there. And, well, the CT's were a man up. And they've wasted it. And they're a man up again, thanks to Mr. Yakin. So, two kills for Yakin and his big green gun in the AWP. And at three versus four, you know, it's still doable for the terrorists. But uh, the CTs, they're going to have a lot of work on their hands. And Galaxy, it was a bit of a cheap peek from him. He's had a bit of damage dealt onto himself. And uh, he's had to fall back and change his position, which is not something you always like to do in CS. Hayawata's made a little bit too much noise going lowers, but no, Spitty didn't react in time. And he's pulled the shot off, and three versus three. One second the terrorists look like they're going to win. The next second the CTs look like they're going to win. <laughs> it's, 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 it's brilliant to watch, and Yakin, he's already got two kills. He hears the CTs coming. No, Yakin has missed one too many orb shots for my liking during this entire game. Skippy missing M4 shots as well. Oh, KRS is going to aggro. He's going to get one. He's got another on low HP. KRS doing what he does best. And Galaxy gets put to sleep. Match point, ladies and gents. And you do start to wonder. The CT's got that early pick. They had the advantage. Why did Base Raper push up mid? Why did he give away his death so easily? 14, Why is just Norwegian Counter-Strike? Norwegian Everybody Counter -Strike. wants frags. Everyone wants yeah. frags. I mean, 14-13 is such a different game to 15-12. 15-12, it now means that expert gaming, the most they can get out of this game is a draw and going into overtime. And as you can see, they're decoing. Galaxy will get that first frag with that CZ75 auto. He's jumping up and trying to get a few more, but let's be realistic, guys. That early frag on paper is going to mean nothing because the terrorists, they have AK-47s. The terrorists, they're in the lead. We know they're the better side, and they've decided they've opted not to go towards this B-bomb site. They've said, right, guys, let's go back towards mid and change it round. We know our opposition are on E and uh, you'd expect their AKs and orbs to really reign supreme and with 55 seconds they've got plenty of time to try and take one of these bomb sites. Yeah, they're going towards mid here by uh, CTs. They, uh, there are three guys pretty close to mid. So have an orb in window and we'll pull the shot off. Good stuff from him and four versus four. The terrorists returning that kill in their favor. And four versus four weapons versus... Oh, look at this! Yakin is in the right place at the right time! Three man from Yakin! And the four man! Ho ho ho! It was a deco! But my word, was he in the right place at the right time? An extreme exper expert gaming lived to fight another day. Yeah, very good play from Yakin there. A good positioning, good aim. He just did it all there. I start to wonder the communication of the terrorists. I mean, Yakin took two out. There was a small pause, and the third terrorist who came out looked the, the, you know, the entire wrong way. You'd surely think that one of his teammates would have told him, "Hang on, mate, he's to the left of you." But uh, I don't know. Who knows? Like you said, Norwegian Counter Strike. <laughs> so everybody wants frags. Everyone wants frags, and Yakin most certainly delivered with a heck of a load of frags that last round. Um, frag movie stuff. Yakin getting the opening frag. And Base Raper coming in as well. There we go. Base Raper with, I think, was it? No, it was a three man. I thought it could have been a four man. 15 14. It's the final round, guys. If, it, if the CTs win, we're going into overtime. If the terrorists win, then Hubbub have defeated the clan. The mixed team will defeat the clan. And you know how we said every time the terrorists get around, the CTs win the round after? 
The CT's won the last round, so you do have to wonder whether it's going to become 16-14, but Spitty... He went for the risk and it paid off for him. And the CTs are saying, we want overtime. We want overtime. Yakin says he wants overtime. Landing that orb shot onto KRS. And Spitty once again. And I think we're going to see overtime, dude. There we have it. 15-15. Is it MR3 or MR5? It says next map DE Cobble. I hope we're not going to play Cobble. <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah. Well, it's uh, MR3. Uh, 10,000 start money. Uh, hopefully the players know that as well. Cool. Uh, because they are in charge of the in charge of the server right now. Yeah. Uh, probably gonna uh, call an admin to ask. It looks like since they haven't started yet. So we'll have a short break from the game. Yeah, I'm sure they'll sort it out. A few nice skins for the players as well. Even a weapons case. Yeah. Pretty lucky by Sloan. <laughs> But yeah, guys, remember to uh, follow um, Gamer Mag on Twitter. Um, is it going to be MR3 or MR5? Someone's asking in the chat. Um, Fleur. MR3. MR3, guys. It's, it's probably because of the delay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's a good point. There will be a delay. It is going to be MR3, guys. Um, MR3 10K, as someone's very uh, kindly said in the chat. Um, I'm definitely going to have to try and get the demo of that for Maniakin. That was brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully he seven. recorded like he should have, of course. Well, yeah, he should have. But again, obviously, I think CSGO records automatically now, doesn't it? You can go into that watch menu thing. Uh, or is that uh, just for matchmaking? No. I think it's only for matchmaking. But uh, the server did have Go TV, so I, I guess it saves somewhere. Yeah. Hopefully they've been saving demos. Otherwise, all their hard work will just go straight down the drain. Um, so, yeah, come on. Why is my game not really responding? Oh, for God's sake, we love Counter Strike, don't we? Spectate, please. I'm on the Choose Team menu. Why is it giving me the Choose Team menu right. in Go, Go TV? Oh, let me just try to retry. CS Go really doesn't like me, does it? No, it seems, it seems to have some problems with you today. Yeah, yeah, it really doesn't like me, be it Hitbox. Uh, TV or I think it was because I was complaining about Hitbox. I'm not gonna lie, I was complaining to someone about Hitbox TV earlier on. Um, I think it's trying. It was trying to get revenge earlier on. It's like, no, Kaya, we're not gonna let you stream. We'll just give you a, a black page. But yeah, guys, remember to. Uh, no, have they started? Is this live? Right, we'll assume it's live then. The jump in uh, <laughs> Glock from Quitty. RS Go. Let's go. Are okay, they... it wasn't live. It wasn't live. Let's calm no, down. No, it looks like I actually have to uh, reconnect here. Can I? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, reconnect. So, so, something bad. Yeah, that's what happened to me. But anyways, guys, remember to follow Gamer Mag on Twitter. It is at GamerMag underscore N-O. And remember to follow myself on Twitter as well. It's at ReasonGaming. TV. So it's at GamerMag underscore no and at Reason Gaming TV. So here we are, guys, overtime already. This game's been a much bigger improvement from the previous game on DDoS 2. And there's the first kill from Yakin, Mr. Orper himself. No idea where that was from, but hopefully they'll use the man to their advantage. So, five versus four. And what's Auto Director doing? It's not doing much at the moment. Here we go. Skippy stood at the back of that A-bomb site with that Auto Sniper. And down he goes. Four versus three. It quickly turned in favor of the terrorists. And here we go again. It's overtime. One second the CTs are in front. The next second the T's are in front. It's a brilliant game. And we've got two very, very evenly matched sides. And what is Auto Director playing at? Let's forget Auto Director, guys. I think I'll manage it myself. Base Rape is going to try and rotate through. Mid is only on three HP. But nevertheless, we'll get the kill. Three versus is one base raper gets the defuse no it's gonna be Akin to get the defuse and base raper he just goes to show that it doesn't matter how much HP you got on counter-strike he had three HP he retook that bomb site all by himself an expert gaming looking like experts in overtime they were of course a few rounds down they brought it back in normal time they forced overtime and so far is bloody well paying off for him one nil and with it being MR3 Remember, 
first team to get four rounds will emerge victorious. And Skippy is using that auto sniper to try and get a few cheeky kills. Base Rape has pushed up mid, something we've seen him do quite a lot. He's going to get one kill. He's going in search of the other one. He has to turn around Base Raper once again. But unfortunately, the three-man just wasn't meant to be. And the CTs, they look good. They look confident. They're pushing up mid. They're not scared of anything at the moment. But three versus two, you'd still expect the terrorists to really win this, being the man, being a man up. Make that two men up. <laughs> Base Raper falling to his death, and the last CT, of course, is Galaxy. Oh, look. Oh, no, he sees KRS, lands the headshot. Good stuff. And he's going to get another one. He's going, he's going. He pulls the trigger, but it wasn't meant to be. 1-1. One, one, and uh, Fleur, Fleur, where did you find these teams? Because these teams are just... They're so evenly matched. I don't ever. I don't actually recall ever seeing such an evenly matched side, uh, evenly matched game on CS:GO before. At least one that I've casted before. Uh, it's pretty fun, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, all, all these guys are region elite, so to speak, but they yeah. haven't really played uh, too much uh, abroad, mm -hmm. except uh, some guys on expert gaming, the guys on uh, Hubbub as well. So no recognize. Yeah, you, you know. <laughs> Sorry. So no one yet to fall to their... Well, I was going to say no one yet to fall to their death, but uh, Quitty managed to get a kill. Spit is going to come around the corner. He's going to nail Hayawata in the head. Four, five. No, four versus three. Deary me, this is how fast the kills are happening, guys. Before you know it, one second, the terror of the CTs are a man in front. The next second, they're no longer a man in front. Three versus two, and surely the terrorists can't give away this three versus one position. Base Raper comes around the corner, and Gummy Tares sends him back to CT spawn. We said it was a T-sided map, and it certainly looks like it at the moment. It is overtime, so the teams have swapped. And for some reason, the overall scoreboard has swapped. So let's get this straight. It is 2-1 in favour of the counter-terrorists. 2-1 in favour of the counter-terrorists. So if the CTs win two rounds or more, they'll win the game. If the terrorists win two rounds or more, we'll go into a second overtime. And to be fully honest, at this rate, it wouldn't surprise me if we were to go into a second round of overtime. So Galaxy and his teammates pushing right through in towards this B bomb site. No, they're taking their time, maybe waiting for the smokes to die out, but Yakin doesn't matter whether he has an AK or an AWP, guys. He's just pulling off those shots at the moment. And an informed player like that... No, I know we're not playing FIFA, but an informed player like that can, uh, can you know, win you the rounds and end up being the big difference at the end of the day. CT's one man down. This might be one round up and make that... Um, uh, this might be two rounds up. No, one round up, two one, one round up. I can't count. Five versus three. Galaxy with another frag. And the CTs, they're in trouble as far as this round is concerned. It's going to take something really special from Quitty to try and pull this clutch off. He's in window room. And, uh, nah, he's, uh, it looks like he's going to save. And uh, up against five terrorists. I don't really fancy his chances. He might get a cheap frag here. Skippy's been spotted and Skippy will fall to his death. But little does Quitty know he's being pushed from behind. He's got his knife out. And see you later, Quitty. 1-0 to the terrorists, and I think that puts it at 2-2 overall in overtime. Sure does. Uh, now we have the T-side actually with a lot of money. And if Expert Gaming managed to win this round, it's going to be real hard for the CTs to come back from that. So the T's, it's not the first time we see them do this, but they've left the bomb in spawn again. I'm not quite sure whether this is something, you know, they're trying to purposely do. Base Raper with a shot onto Quitty. Quitty was looking at the wrong place, and the CT's, they're in trouble. It's as simple as that. Expert gaming, looking like experts. I keep using the pun, but it's always good that they're living up to their name. Five on three. As they slowly make their way towards one of these bomb sites, and KRS gets caught with his pants down. And uh, with only one CT left standing, it was a CT on short, up against not just, you know, one or two terrorists, it's all five terrorists again. I don't fancy him. I think in the last round we only saw one terrorist fall to his death. And this time round we've seen no terrorists fall to their death. So let's go and have a look to go at uh, Gummy Tarzan. You can hear a 
bit of noise coming from at least one of the terrorists. He's surely got to pull that frag off. He does. But he doesn't have time to reload. He knows that the terrorists are tracking him down. He's got to look right. He's got to look left. He can only look at one place at once. And 2-0. That puts it 3-2 in overtime in favour of Expert Gaming. And one more round is all Expert Gaming need to emerge victorious. And when you consider that Hubbub were quite comfortably in the lead at one point in, nor in normal time, you've got to give credit where it's due to Expert Gaming. Yeah, now you can see that the CT teams, they just bought what they can here. So even managers to get one actually and hopefully they can build on that frag quitty takes down base raper galaxy just pretty much taking his time there underground KRS we said he bought everything he could and he bought a shotgun and it's paid off for him gummy Tarzan in B by himself no he's got another player beside him which is Sly and Owen oh, is gonna fall right into the crosshair of Spitty 2-0 exactly what the doctor ordered for expert they finally got that advantage once again and are they going to make it count? Three versus four. Three versus three. And Quitty's in a bit of an awful predicament. He's expecting Skippy to come up the steps. And that pre-fire paid off for him. Gummy Tarzan, he's got his eyes, all eyes on the A-bomb site, but he missed mid. And how much longer is Hayawata going to be stood up for? Not much longer. And expert gaming going to the next round.